tree-killing beetle set to invade northern U.S. and Canada. A recent study shows a warming climate has expanded tree-killing southern pine beetles habitats and forests in the northern U.S., which means southern Canada could soon be ravaged by the pests in the coming decades. The southern pine beetle, one of the world's most aggressive tree-killing insects, has typically only lived in Central America and the southeastern United States. Thousands of adult beetles can attack a tree in just two months by carving S-shaped tunnels under the bark. It is predicted that the beetles should gradually spread north along the Atlantic coast all the way up to Canada's Nova Scotia. By 2080, the pest could infest red and jack pines, which extend across more than 270,000 square miles in the U.S. and Canada, which is roughly the size of Afghanistan. According to the U.S. Forest Service, infestations of pine beetles have cost an estimated annual timber loss of $100 million from 1990 to 2004 in the southeastern U.S. Climate change The Earth has its own way of cooling rising temperatures. Scientists have long speculated the Earth has a natural thermostat that regulates global temperatures by increasing or decreasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now a new study suggests this could be true. Researchers have found a correlation between greater deposits of lithium in limestone rocks and warmer periods in the planet's history, when the Earth's weathering thermostat sped up. Carbon dioxide traps heat in the Earth's atmosphere. A dip in carbon dioxide levels can potentially cause an ice age, while a spike can make the planet heat up. The Earth regulates carbon dioxide through a process called the weathering thermostat. Carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere when it dissolves in rainwater and combines with rocks to form bicarbonate. When rocks dissolve in water, the bicarbonate combines with calcium to form limestone, locking carbon dioxide inside. Movement of tectonic plates then draws the limestone under the Earth's crust. The carbon dioxide eventually returns to the atmosphere when it separates from the limestone and is thrust out in volcanic eruptions. According to researchers, the Earth's thermostat responds to changes in the planet's temperature. Heat speeds up the weathering process, while cold slows it down. Other influences on the climate include solar activity, the growth of vegetation, and the impact of human activity. Scientists believe the Earth's natural thermostat cannot keep up with man-made climate change and are now looking into ways to artificially speed up the weathering process to counter global warming. Cooling the planet at a cost. As temperatures on Earth reach unprecedented highs, extreme, potentially disastrous weather will become more likely. Scientists say there may be ways to intervene, but warn they come with risky consequences. Researchers are investigating strategies for geoengineering, one of which is mimicking the effects of a volcanic eruption. Erupting volcanoes spew out large amounts of sulfur-rich gases, which help cool the Earth by reflecting solar radiation back into space. The same effect could be recreated using planes that would inject sulfur into the atmosphere. But to cool the planet by one degree Celsius, 6,700 injections are needed eventually, which would cost 20 billion US dollars annually. This approach also risks destroying the ozone layer and reducing rainfall, enough to potentially cause droughts in certain regions. A similarly drastic approach to cooling the Earth can be achieved by thinning heat-trapping cirrus clouds. Seeding causes the clouds to break apart and lets more heat escape. The seeding process, however, must be precise, otherwise new cirrus clouds may form elsewhere and add to warming. But while sulfur injections and cirrus cloud seedings will cool the land, carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere remain the same, and ocean acidification continues. As such, researchers argue the two strategies should be deployed more as a last resort, adding that reducing carbon emissions are much more effective at curing climate change. The future may be rainier than expected. A new study prepared by scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory shows the amount of rain in tropical regions may increase in the future due to global warming. The atmospheric general circulation above the equator is known as the Hadley Cell, which includes a wide zone of rising air. The zone has been observed to be narrowing over the past 30 to 40 years due to climate change. This causes a decrease in tropical high clouds. The decrease leads to a cooler tropical atmosphere, which then requires increased latent heating to balance the cooling from high cloud shrinkage. 
This leads to increased precipitation that would occur primarily over the tightened convective zones near the equator. NASA study also highlights the intensified hydrological cycle that comes with a wet gets wetter and dry gets drier spatial pattern. That doesn't sound like a good thing, does it? Will California soon be underwater? Researchers are warning that melting ice shelves in Antarctica could cause sea levels to rise higher than expected, with the changes being most apparent in California. Scientists theorize that due to the Earth's rotation and gravitational pull, melting ice in Antarctica, particularly in the western portion, is pulled toward the California coast. This makes rising sea levels more dramatic in the region. For every foot of global sea level rise caused by the melting West Antarctic, sea levels will rise approximately 1.25 feet on the California coast. In 2100, sea levels could rise as high as 6.9 feet in San Francisco and 7.1 feet in La Jolla. The California Ocean Protection Council plans to hold a series of workshops and propose measures to address this issue.